reconciliation of book and taxable income problem six. Radish Corporation, a calendar year accrual basis corporation, reported $5 million of net income after tax on its current year financial statements prepared in accordance with GAAP. Determine Radish's taxable income and regular tax liability. Assume the corporate tax rate is 21%. The following is information regarding Radish. Federal income tax expense was $1.5 million. Radish incurred $30,000 of meals and $25,000 of entertainment expenses. Assume for tax purposes, the meals are 50% deductible and entertainment costs are not deductible. Radish sold two pieces of equipment used in business. The sales proceeds are $400,000. The original cost was $2 million. Book depreciation was $1.2 million and tax depreciation was $1.5 million. Radish uses the reserve method for bad debts. Additions to the reserves for the year equal $400,000. Accounts receivable actually written off equal $450,000. Book depreciation for the year equals $900,000. Maker's depreciation for the year equals $1.25 million. All right, we've got another reconciliation of book to taxable income problem. This one, though, is not only asking for taxable income, it's also asking for a tax liability. Now, it's pretty simple in the sense that once you get taxable income, you're just going to take the taxable income and multiply it by the 21% corporate tax rate. That's all you have to do because you're told that the corporate tax rate is 21%. So actually, it's, it's, it's just following what you've been doing before. If you have yet to watch the reconciliation of book and taxable income previous problems, make sure you do that. This one's meant to be towards the end, and it's meant to also show you how to calculate the tax liability amount once you have taxable income. Okay, so remember the idea here. You've got book income. We're told that the net income of the business is $5 million, which as we're told is in accordance with GAAP. So anytime you have net income, book income, whatever the number is given, usually net income is the number that is referred to. That's always your starting point. So net income is $5 million. And the idea, as talked about in the previous videos, is that for book or, or gap purposes, the rules for calculating income, starting with revenues minus expenses, give us net income, net loss, there's differences between the tax law and the, and the book, the book law, the accounting rules, okay? And the first one, or one, and there's differences. There's permanent and temporary differences. The, the temporary differences mean that there are going to be differences over time, but they're going to equal the same amount. Permanent, they will not equal the same amount. They're, they're never going to reverse, we call it, or equal out, okay? And the first example is, in the, in the first line, what we do is we start with the net income of $5 million. We go through line by line. I'll put a little arrow across to show you. Okay. And in the previous problem, I kind of showed you like the presentation, you have book income on the left side, taxable income on the right, and you see like the changes in the middle. We're kind of focusing on the change approach here, the changes. Okay. But I also kind of make it as clear as possible with talking about everything and what exactly you're doing. We go through each one. The first item will show you adding back or subtracting an item. And what you do is you think about it. What do we, how do we treat it for book purposes? And then how do we treat it for tax purposes? Okay, so federal income tax expense was $1.5 million. So this is something on the income statement that we always deduct in calculating net income. So in getting the net income of $5 million, we subtracted away $1.5 million. The question is, is that the same treatment for tax purposes? And the answer is no. You're not allowed to take the same deduction on the tax return. You're not allowed to deduct federal income tax expense. So we need to add that back. So when you're not allowed to take a deduction, you add back. If there's income that you should have that you didn't report, you should have, you add that back. If there's income that you shouldn't report, you subtract. That's kind of the idea is that you think about how it was treated for book for the books and then you you basically add that back, okay? So we're going to add back and what we do here is we for add backs we do positives and for negatives we use parentheses. Um, so we're going to just put a positive 1.5 million dollars here. Okay, so as we go down the bottom, we're, we're adjusting. It's going to be a calculation. Okay, so now the next item, we're done with that one. Put a little check mark. I usually put a check mark or a line across to show you that we finished it or what the result is. So the next item is now going to be meals and entertainment. So meals and entertainment, for financial accounting purposes, you can deduct it as long as it's within bounds, which here we're told meals are 30000 entertainment's 25000 and nothing else told about the financial accounting. So we assume that's deductible. It's, it's fine to deduct. For tax purposes, though, meals and entertainment, they've had different rules over time. That's changed 
over various years. So I have to tell you specifically how to treat them. So I tell you in this question, for tax purposes, meals are 50% deductible and entertainment costs are not deductible. And that's, that. again, the treatment is, is different over time. So the idea here is that we were allowed to take a full deduction of, if you add these two numbers together, and this equals, do the sum there, for book, we took 30,000 plus 25,000, that's $55,000, $55,000, okay? Now there's really different ways you can show this. I like to just show it if you're just asked to calculate the tax, the, um, the taxable income, regular tax liability, but you're not asked to show the differences, then I like to just put that number back. And you ask, okay, well, was that an addition? Or what do you do? Do you, do you add it back? Do you subtract it back? Well, you ask, was it an, an expense? Was it an income item? Well, it was a book expense. And if we're calculating net income, then what you do is that full $55,000, go ahead and add that back in because the idea here is the $5 million that was calculated for net income, this was subtracted, so we add it back. Okay, so now, now what we do is we do the tax amount and we say, okay, well, according to the rules, for tax purposes, entertainment is not deductible. So the $25,000 of entertainment is zero. We can't take any of that. And then the $30,000 of meals, we're told 50% deductible. So we take the $30,000 for the meals, multiply that by five for half because we're allowed 50% deductible and that's going to equal $15,000. So we're allowed for tax purposes to take $15,000 total. The sum of 15,000, right? Half of the 30,000 and then none of the 25,000. So the idea here is if we add back the $55,000 of expense that was taken to adjust to get taxable number, this is actually the amount, the tax number is actually the amount that we should be deducting. So this is going to be subtract, subtracted away. We're going to subtract that amount, that $15,000 away. See how we do that? So there's different ways you can really calculate these numbers. Now, if you're asked to show the difference, which sometimes in the homeworks or on exams, your teacher might ask you to show like, what's the difference, the change. So the change here is just, you take these two numbers and the tax number is a negative, right? Because that's actually what you can deduct. 55,000 minus 15,000 is gonna be an adjustment of $40,000, okay, of $40,000. So we adjust by $40,000. So what I'm saying is you could either show positive 40,000 or you could show 55,000 and a negative 15,000. Either way, it's gonna result in the same change in calculating your taxable income. I like personally, when I think about it, to add back in the 55,000 and then subtract away the 15,000 because the idea is that you're basically adding back what you did for tax purposes, for book purposes, and then you're really, then you're, then you're subtracting away the portion you should be taking for tax. That makes the most sense for me. But again, your teacher might have you show the difference, which the difference, the change is $40,000. That's the change. Okay. And sometimes solution books and, and manuals and, and books, textbooks, they, they use a change method as well. Okay. Okay. The next item now deals with the sale of two pieces of, of equipment used in business where the sales proceeds are $400,000 and the original cost was $2 million. So for book purposes and tax purposes, that doesn't mean it make any difference, the sales proceeds and the original cost. What makes the difference is that you have book depreciation and tax depreciation. So of all the different ones, this is this one is the easiest for you to understand, be, even with not knowing tax law, because you're like, okay, for book purposes, we took $1.2 million of depreciation. And for tax purposes, we basically took $1.5 million of depreciation. So the idea is that there's going to be a difference in the gain reported in with respect to these assets. Okay, so for book purposes, the book value is going to be the original cost of two million minus the one point two million, and that equals eight hundred thousand dollars is the book value, and that's and we we sold it for four hundred thousand, so that means that we had a four hundred thousand dollar loss. And we took that and getting the $5 million amount. Okay. And getting the $5 million net income for tax purposes. We've got $2 million original cost minus 1.5 million. That gives us a $500,000 adjusted basis. And if we sell for 400,000, that gives us a $100,000 loss. So again, we can kind of do the same thing here. 
If you took $400,000 as a loss, which is like an expense, we can add back to $400,000. And then the amount of loss you should be taking for tax purposes is going to be negative $100,000. So again, it's a similar approach. So that shows you that basically what we're doing, the net effect is going to be a positive $300,000. So again, whatever approach you prefer, would you rather do the change, which is positive 300,000? Or would you rather just add back the numbers? Just thinking about how it affects the books. I like to just do the one you add back the numbers. That's the easiest thing for me to do. The best way, the best adjustment for me. Okay. That's the way I like to think about it. Okay. The next one is the one that usually gives students the most trouble. And that is the, um, the accounts receivable, although it's not that difficult. We'll do it together as always. Radish uses the reserve method, which is the allowance method. Additions to the reserve for the year are $400,000. Accounts receivable written off are $450,000. So again, we can basically do another approach just like we've been doing. The $400,000 of reserves, additions to reserves, that means that's the amount of, of um, bad debt expense taken for the year. So we can basically add back that number. So that would be a, a bad debt expense. We can add back that number. And the 450 actually written off, that's what would, what should be, because that's, because remember for, as talked about in the previous videos, for financial accounting, we use the reserve method to calculate the bad debt expense. But for tax purposes, we use a direct write-off method. So the actual written off is actually what we take as a deduction. So the idea here is that's what we're actually going to subtract. And that shows a negative $50,000 adjustment. Okay, we've got the depreciation as well. We have to do that as well. So at the bottom here, you've got book depreciation. We can keep doing this. Just keep doing the same approach. It, it makes it a lot simpler. It shows you. And that's another reason why I'm doing another problem because this one is you can use the easy approach. In my opinion, it's easy just to go through and do it. You basically just give back what you did for book purposes. And then you basically, you do, you, you, you do what you're supposed to do with the tax. If it's income, you obviously add it in. If it's an expense, you subtract it, you deduct. Okay. So book depreciation was taken. That was $900,000. So we're going to put 900,000. That's going to be a positive. We add that back. And then makers, which is the tax appreciation, is 1.25 million. 1.25 million. That's going to be a negative. That's going to be the last of our items. That's the last one we do. Okay. And again, you can do the change if you want the change between those two. So for the account receivable, it's going to be negative 50,000. I didn't do that, but you can obviously see 400 positive, negative 450 is going to be negative 50. And then this one's going to be a negative 350,000, right? Positive 900, 1.25 million, negative $350,000. So if you calculate all these numbers on the right to 1.25 million, you're going to get, and I'll put this at the top because we're losing space. So the taxable income equals, right? Taxable income. So everything on that right side. Taxable income here equals six million four hundred and forty thousand dollars. Six million four hundred forty thousand dollars, and that's the first part of the question that we're asked. Taxable income. We're not done because now we have to do tax liability. It's very simple though. Just multiply it by the corporate tax rate, twenty-one percent. So we're going to multiply that by twenty-one percent, or 0.21, which is going to give us our tax liability, and that's actually what is owed by the corporation. So 6,440,000 times 21%, that's going to equal 1,352,400. And we are done with this question. Make sure you go back through all this, calculate all these things, and that's how you get the tax liability and taxable income.